After over 150 years, the basics of photography have not changed from the principle of light being exposed to film or paper with a light sensitive chemical coating the surface. The raw materials and the chemicals may have changed over the years and improved, but not to a great extent. Yet in the space of 10 years or so, photography has changed from light being affected by chemicals, but to light hitting photosensitive cells and creating the same result, but with greatly improved quality and making it easier to take photographs. So much so that the photographs are taken on telephones rather than purpose-made cameras. This photograph is, is Tom at the Cameron School of Mines, Bolton. It was taken with an RB67, but the standard lens. And I've, what I've got is an assistant about 10 feet behind him with another flash gun. So I say you get the backlight in and get a sort of a three-dimensional effect to the photograph. Many photographs were taken underground at the once vast mining industry of Cornwall. Miners would record that they were and became the norm with most industries regularly take photographs of labourers during their daily work. This photograph is, is the West Cornwall Mine Rescue Group. What I had to do was, uh, as you can see underground, it's very dark and all you can see is cat lamps. So I had to line up the camera to where I, I would guess they would be and just watch the cat lamps running towards me. I looked down into the camera and when the cat lamps came into focus, I snapped the photo and it seemed to work out very well. This is South Crofty Mine at sun sunset. This was taken on the way home from work one evening. But in the mining industry, the ore soon started to disappear and the ruins of the engine houses and counting houses soon became ruins on the landscape, like lookout posts dotted around the county. Many were demolished, but many remain as a reminder of the Cornish heritage. Photography is still used to record results on, in research and, and in many aspects so that a particular place or object can be examined at a later time. This is a wood lace. Its actual size is about three to four millimetres across. And this here is it's um, uh, pepper seeds. This is a Queen Victoria dock at Falmouth, which can easily be seen from the road. Quite often you go down there, the dock's empty, but if you're lucky enough, you, you find a big ship in there and you need a wide angle lens, at least 28 millimeters, and make some fantastic photographs. This is a photograph, remember the Royal Horse Artillery and it was captured from a, a, a group of people, just, just a, single, a single person, and grabbed the photo. This is Pendennis Castle. Rather than ca photograph the castle from the usual angles, I photographed it from the front and, and just solarised the sky just to make the photograph more dramatic. Again, I did exactly the same here with each bull mine. Also to record events that are happening in picture from time to time. Things that still exist after that should have long since gone. More so, since, since the 60s, photography has not been used to record, but as an art form, rather than pencil and paper or paint and canvas. I have been a photographer for some 30 years now and I've seen the changes. It's a totally different practice from what I'm doing now, but to what I was doing 30 years ago. My plan is to carry on with my photography, but in a different way. Exhibitions will be held through this spring and summer months. Whilst during the autumn and winter, which I find more interesting, I shall be out and about with the camera preparing for the following season. I can still be contacted for commissions, but Portraiture will mainly be by invitation, but you can still contact me and ask. I can be contacted by email, phone and via Facebook and other forms of social media. All these details as well as a catalogue of my photography can be found at www.malcolm-stewart.co.uk